Okay, so let's first of all talk about how normal vision works. This is good to spend some time on because you're pretty sure to see a question about the eye on the test. Um, so first of all, um, what are the different parts of the eye? Well, what would we call this part of the eye? The lens. That's the lens. Do you remember what do we call the back of the eye? The pupil. Now the pupil is really in the front of the eye too, right? That's what lets the light in. The back of the eye is called the retina. I don't know if you remember this from bio, but the back of the eye is the retina. And this is where the light sensing equipment is. This is where the nerves are they are going to sense the light. Now, when the, lot, uh, when the eye is working properly, where do we want the image to form? Well, when the eye is working properly, we want the image to form on the retina. What would it look like if the image forms on the retina? Well, it would look, it would look like this. Because remember, the image is where the outgoing light rays converge. The image is where the outgoing light rays converge. So we want the outgoing light rays to converge on the retina. So this would be indicating a focused image, a clear focused image uh, where the light rays are uh, on, uh, the uh, on the retina. OK, so let's see a couple of things about the way uh, the eye works. So first of all, is the eye creating a real or a virtual image? Right? Um, how do you know? Well, remember, a real image is on the same side as the outgoing light, and a virtual image is on the opposite side to the outgoing light. Well, which side is the outgoing light on here, the left or the right? The left. I mean, the right. Which one? The right. Wait, the retina is in the back, in the front of the eye? Well, where's the light coming in from? Oh, well, the isn't the light, light coming in yeah, from over here, know. right? So light goes into people's eyes. Uh, Superman has heat vision, so the light beams go out of his eyes. But usually light goes into your eyes, right? So usually light comes into your eyes. So which side is the outgoing light on? The right. Yeah, this is the light that's going out from the lens, we should say. So it's obviously it's not going out from the eye. But what we mean by the outgoing light is the light that's going out from the lens. Okay. So this is the light that's going out from the lens. It's on the right. And which side is the image on? because that's where the retina is, yeah. so this really is a real image on the same side as the outgoing light. All right, so here we have a real image. Um, so, uh, and also, uh, is, the, is the lens of the eye converging or diverging? Converging. Of course, I drew it converging, but how do I know it's converging? Well, remember that the whole point here is that they're supposed to create a real image on the retina. Um, but a, if you remember our chart, a diverging lens only makes virtual images. Yeah. There's no way a diverging lens would get us the real image here. So the lens, the eye, the lens of the eye is converging. If, if we're making a real image, does that tell you? Who, who, who does that tell you about? Um, the focal length, the image distance, or the object distance? Whose sign does that tell us? If you, have a, a, if you have a real image, that tells you the sign of a variable. Oh. Whose sign does that tell you? The, the focal? How about if you have a converging device? Whose sign does that tell you? The image? Oh, looks like we should probably review that. So let's go back and review that. This is really important to have in your notes. So converging devices always have positive focal lengths. Yeah. And diverging devices always have negative focal lengths. Mm -hmm. I think we talked about how, um, so this is true for both lenses and mirrors. Yeah. It's best not to use the terms concave and convex because those give different signs for lenses and mirrors. But anything converging has a positive focal length and diverging is negative. OK, that's very important. Uh, and how about if you have a real image? Your first guess was that, was that that told us about the focal distance, but actually it turns out it tells us about the image distance. Okay. Uh, what does it tell us about the image distance? It's positive. Right. And if you have a virtual image, negative. and your instructor uses these symbols for image distance, is that right? S prime for the image distance? Yeah. Okay. So uh, S prime for the image distance. I noticed somewhere in the answer key he also used I for image distance. But anyway, usually uh, he's using S prime for the image distance. This shouldn't be too hard to remember because yeah, what, what does S prime stand for again? Image distance. So it's related to what type of image you're getting. 
And whose focal length is this? Well, this is the focal length of the lens or mirror, so it stands to reason that it depends on what type of lens or mirror you have. So it's not too hard to remember, but the focal length of a lens or mirror depends on whether it's a converging or diverging lens or mirror, and whether the image is uh, real or virtual tells you the sign of the image distance. So let's go back to this. We know that the eye always gives us a real image. So what's that, what, what does that tell us about one of the variables? That S prime is really zero. Okay. And we know that the lens of the eye is always converging. What does that tell us? The F is greater than zero. Okay. One of the most important things to watch out for in, uh, so these are not technicalities. One of the most important things that people make mistakes about is the signs for optics. So we have to be very careful. Remember we said you should always write the sign for any focal length or image distance because that's one of the common mistakes that people make. Okay. So that gives us uh, those ideas. So make sure you have this in your notes and in your cheat sheet. This will be important on the test for sure. Let's go back to the eye. Uh, let's see, anything else that we need to know about um, the eye? Well, um, so um, the normal eye has a near point, a near point and a far point. Mm -hmm. The near point is the closest an object can be and you can still focus on it. The near point is the closest an object can be and you can still focus on it. And the far point is the furthest it can be. So these should be memorized. I don't know if you know what the normal near and far points are. But a normal person with normal vision, their normal near point is 25 centimeters. Okay. What that means is, even if your vision is perfect, you still can't focus on something that's less than 25 centimeters from your face. You can try that experiment. If you just take the piece of paper, if you put it right in front of your eyes, you can't focus on it. Uh, so even if your vision is perfect, you can't focus on something that's inside 25 centimeters. Okay, so the eye is just not designed to see things closer than 25 centimeters. But what's the normal far point? Actually, we can see things an infinite distance away. It doesn't matter how far away it is, you can still focus on it. You can see that because, after all, we can focus on the moon, right? Yeah. Even though the moon is hundreds of thousands. In fact, we can even focus on stars. If you look up at the stars, they're clear points. They're not fuzzy. So we can focus on things no matter how far away they are. But there's a limit to how close they can be. So these numbers should definitely be memorized because you need these to solve almost any question about the eye. You need okay. these numbers to memorize questions. I mean, to uh, answer questions about uh, the eye. OK, so this is the way a normal eye would work. All right, and now we have to see what happens with nearsightedness and farsightedness. Nearsightedness. Now, if someone is nearsighted, do you remember, is that hyperopia or myopia? Myopia. Yeah, myopia. Now, do you remember, is this someone who's good at seeing near things or bad at seeing near things? Um, good at seeing near things. Okay, I always had a hard time remembering that, but actually, that's one thing all my students are really good at. They have no <laughs> trouble remembering. So this tells you that you're good at near vision. So what are you bad at? Far. So what's wrong? Do you have a bad near point or a bad far point? Too bad far point. So is your far point uh, too big or too small? Too small. Yeah. Your far point is less than infinity. Yeah. So this is the way, this is true for many people, so I certainly cannot see things that are an infinite distance away. I can hardly see something, I can't even see something this distance away. Okay, so my far point is, is sadly not nearly close to infinity over here. Um, so I guess, uh, among many other things, I got nearsightedness. So that would give us uh, this. Now what does that look like in the eye? What's going wrong here? Doesn't it focus it in front of the eye instead of at the retina? Yeah, it looks like you know that. That's good. So where would the image be? Remember, the image is where the outgoing light rays converge. So that would be here. Yeah. Uh, the way I remember that is I just think that nearsighted also means that the image is too near to the lens. Okay. Just as a memory aid, you could also think that nearsighted means the image is too near to the lens, just as a memory aid. So this is what's going wrong with nearsightedness. What happens when the image is in the wrong place? Well, it, turned, it, it just means that the image is fuzzy to you because yeah. it's not focused on the retina. Okay, well, uh, you, knew, uh, you, know, you most, knew most of that, so let's go on to farsightedness. What's another name for farsightedness? That would be hyperopia. That should be easy to remember because hyper means a lot or far. Um, so what, what's wrong with this person's vision? Focuses um, behind. Yeah, as a memory aid, you could say 
it focuses too far from the lens. Just as a memory aid, you can think that farsighted means you're focusing too far from the lens. But that, what does that mean? Is this person bad at seeing far things or bad at seeing close yeah, things? seeing close things. Yeah, farsighted means you're good at seeing near things. No, you're good at far things. So you're bad at near things? Yeah. All right, so do they have a bad far point or a bad near point? Bad near point. Is their near point too big or too small? Too big. Yeah, you want to be able to see things that are close, in fact, it's bigger than 25 centimeters. So this is a one. So this usually happens to people when they get older. When people get older, you see that they hold the newspaper further and further away from themselves because they're yeah. chasing after their near point. Their near point keeps running away from their eyes.